Greetings fiends, Donna Jean here of Donna Jean's Coffee House of Horror. I had the good fortune to be able to sit with Felisa Rose, the amazing and the beautiful, and with Dave Kerr, also the amazing, and Michael McLenn, also the beautiful, and we just had such a wonderful time sitting and chatting about Indiegogo's Bloody Summer Camp. And um, really, I haven't had this much fun sitting and talking to some of my horror family uh, since the pandemic started. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I do, and I will see you at the movies. <laughs> Take it away, Dave. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dave, speaking yeah. of taking it away, you are kind of the big wig behind this. You're the writer, the producer, the director. Um, how did all of this come about? Is it just something that a nightmare in your mind? Uh, it's been, it's actually been a long time coming. Uh, the two previous films that I'd made that were, uh, Curse and Slash Nurse and Return of the Slash Nurse that were they were both sequels. Uh, I've always been a fan of slasher films, and uh, we we filmed Curse and Return back to back. And I was kind of on the on the fence about whether or not I was going to go ahead and do a, a third film or take a break. And I decided that if I wanted to do if I was going to do a third film that that I was going to make like the film that I really really wanted to make. And uh, I love camp slasher films from the 80s. It's my favorite, like, subgenre of horror. And um, I just, I want, I want to go back and, and, and you know, and redo uh, that because I think that that's kind of the mistake that a lot, a lot of these remakes are making mm. is that they take it out of the 80s, which was kind of part of the appeal of these slasher films, and they bring them to modern times. And I think that's a big mistake. And I, I wanted to do something that was back in the eighties again, that was, you know, kind of trying to stay true to the, to the basically my favorite, you know, genre of horror. So uh, in terms of the eighties, the you're going full fledged eighties style in every way. And uh, in, which brings us over to the amazing uh, Felisa. Felisa, how did you get uh, talked into this? I imagine that wasn't too difficult. Well, you know, these guys are amazing and um, they reached out to my website and we started chatting, Dave and I, and um, then I read it. And while on the page, it was great and fun. When I actually got there and walked onto the set in the rec hall, I was like, oh my gosh, I just walked right back onto the set of Sleepaway Camp. Like, Every actor was in character and the hairstyles, the makeup, the outfits, it just felt so fun and everyone was so passionate and enthusiastic. I, they know I love this movie and these people so deeply. They're just, their hearts are in the right place. They're super talented and it was such a pleasure being there. That is awesome. And your, your character is not going to be uh, Angela revisited. Um, you're playing a camp director? <laughs> no, it's she's far from Angela. She has quite the attitude. <laughs> I got a little bitch going on in this one. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we wrote the character to have you know, to 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 be you know the uh, the the hard ass, and Felissa she gave it even more of a spin, and we we absolutely loved it, uh, especially her back and forth with uh, Bobby, who plays uh, the camp <laughs> owner, uh, Mr. Leahy. Uh, just the, the added kind of like the sassiness to the, to the character was just, everyone was laughing. It was, it was awesome to see her playing that character, especially, you know, in any time you see Felicity play a character that you're not typically used to seeing her play, it's, it's definitely fun you know, to see the difference between that and Angela. Or you know, or um, or like the the way she was so silent, and this character is, is like the exact opposite. She speaks her mind on, on everything. 
and and then some. And Michael too was so amazing. I mean, oh. his character is just hilarious and it's always great when you're working with other actors and Michael, please feel free to, you know, tell us about your character and your, you're such a, a crucial part of this whole process and this project, but it was so fun playing back and forth with you and everybody else. Oh yeah, I absolutely enjoyed it so much. Uh, I, I play the other uh, camp director. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. You're so I great at it. Uh, I pretty much look like Shaggy's love child from Scooby-Doo. <laughs> and I have a big thing for Felissa Rose's character. I, I'm always trying to say, hey, you know, you want to come and hang out and stuff? And of course, you'll be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I want to go see this now. <laughs> yeah. This is what we need now. This is like the type of movie that you just want to like leave your brain at the door and just get involved in this world this fun you know camp with these crazy characters and it's just like like dave said a love for what we all you know care about the the camp genre the camp slasher that's uh that's sort of you know something that we're all crazy about and you know i think part of this uh the quarantine and the COVID 19 thing part of what it has emphasized to we horror fans is something that we already knew and maybe some of us could even take for granted which is how much it really means to us and how much of a family we all really are and uh the the desire to see the new films the desire to get together with the people that are in the films and how much fun all of that is and right now we do need it so much yeah it was a uh, we just filmed for the first time again this past weekend. We were supposed to start up in March. We got a couple days done and then the COVID thing happened. And we hadn't seen each other in person for like a few months. We've done a couple video uh, chats, um, but uh, it was just, uh, the camp for one thing is kind of like, yeah, it's like a home away from home. We love the people who run the camp. They're so, uh, they're so, generous with letting us use the camp and and pretty much having that our you know, whatever we want to do with it they're fine with it and they're laid back and uh just everyone when when you get there it's kind of like you know it's, it's out it's away from the world it's it's like the quarantine that you want you know it's like <laughs> when we get, when we're on set we're not looking at our phones we're you know we're having fun we're seeing people we're it's you know it's just it's really nice to be out there in such a such an awesome awesome location with these people that you know you have a really really good time being around and so when we film it, it's hectic but at the same time we're having fun you know we're joking and it's it's like being around the family mm. now you're filming it it you were thinking you were going to finish um late spring yeah and you said it's it's kind of put you back do you have a guesstimate about when this might be completed now yeah it's uh we're shooting for for mid august um yeah we were supposed to uh, start back up in march and in may but uh like i said as as soon as we did like two days it, we were put on lockdown and so i had to tell the camp and uh basically everything at the camp the camp summer camp got canceled all the weddings that that they have there during the off season to raise you know for money for because it's a non-profit camp for like kids with medical needs. And so, you know, everything got canceled and kind of put on hold for those couple months where nothing was happening. And um, yeah, so now we just went back in June. We got a couple days this month. And then next month we, we film quite a few days and a few in August and we should be wrapped up uh, by the end of summertime. Mm. Great. Now this camp, uh, I believed it. Weren't you able to raise some money for them being a nonprofit? Do you want yeah, to we did. That? We did a couple of things. We we you know it's it's just a, a a drop in the bucket you know compared to what they usually raise. I think if you go on their website, some eighteen hundred dollars per kid go to summer camp according to their their website. But we were able to raise twelve hundred dollars through uh, a viral video type thing that we did, and also 
we started uh, every Blu-ray that we sold, we donated five dollars to the camp, and uh, yeah, we, we got up to twelve hundred dollars. So it's not much, but you know, it's what we could do. It's almost one kid being able to go though. Yeah, yeah, and uh, like I said, and that we did it because, like I said, we love the camp. We love the people there. They, they, we would never have this opportunity to make this movie if we did not have this camp to film at. You know, that's the big part of of the film. So we were eternally grateful for them letting us film there. And like I said, mm -hmm. we always try to show our appreciation. Now I've got my, uh, my camp trust fall mug, which I don't know if you can see because of yeah. the lighting here. You probably can't. But I, I actually got this from Felisa at the Pop Rock yes. Horror Con. Um, and I love it. And so is the camp actually really Camp Trust Fall? <laughs> that if anybody wants to donate money to it, where could they look at sending? Uh, it's actually Camp Holiday Trails. Uh, that was the only thing that we, we had to do is uh, they, I asked them and they said being a, a charity that it was probably a good idea to not use the real name in the, in the film. <laughs> That's a so good yeah, idea. Uh, if you go to Camp Holiday, if you go to, I believe it's CampHolidayTrails.org, uh, it's, it, you know, they're, they're, that's their website. And there's Great. obviously a link where you could d donate money to, to their camp. Now, you've still got, do you um, have the Indiegogo? Is that how you say that, Indiegogo? Yeah, yeah um, it's weird, Indiegogo. It's very cool. It's very groovy. Um, <laughs> If people go on to India Go Go for Bloody Summer Camp, I think you still have as one of the perks like um, the videos and things like that. So uh, yeah, we still we still have. Uh, the, uh, what do you mean, like videos, like uh, um, I like shout outs from people? Right, right. There was there was something. I, and I'm, I'm so sorry, I should have looked to this up okay. before, but um, I know that one of the perks I got was was like um, the t-shirt, the but yeah. I believe that there was a perk that you could get a copy of the film. Yeah. So that's kind of what I was thinking. And is okay. there, like, if somebody is seeing this and they're like, oh, I need that movie, if they know that they go ahead and go online, they'll be able to get a copy of it. Yes, that's correct. We still have, uh, it, it was supposed to end in February, but because we hit our goal, it goes into something called uh, in demand, which basically means as long as anyone uh, makes a purchase, it'll stay up. It's kind of like a store. And we still have the, uh, you can pre-order the Blu-ray, the DVD, and we have a couple uh, VHS copies left. Wow. Well. Speaking yeah. of the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we were really excited to be able to offer that one. I think a company called Tapeworm uh, is doing our VHS uh, copies. But yeah, that's, that's so cool. still on their t-shirts. Uh, we still have uh, a couple props and everything on there. So uh, as long as it's still up, you, you can go on there and still pre-order the movie or get yourself a t-shirt. Great. I'm sorry for my rambling around to try to get to that. I was like, get my brain in sync. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, and we'll do whatever you want, you know, like in terms of, I know we'll, you know, as a cast, we'd all come together and do any kind of videos and shout outs and all that good stuff to support, you know, indie filmmaking and, and projects we love and projects that we're passionate about. I mean, this is, uh, you know, this is just kind of the, the way we make films today and it's awesome and it, and it, and it helps people you know get their projects together so thank you we are very very grateful so it's really a labor of love between the viewers and the cast the writers the directors we're all in it together yeah tons of love such yeah. a community mm. you know takes a village <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's always great uh to to know that you have support from people who believe in the idea that you're trying to create like this because you know like she said the, the old way of doing it uh a lot of these movies would never get made they'd never get greenlit but now you can kind of take out the middleman and you can take it right to the consumer and say if y'all like this then y'all can help me make it and there's a lot of movies that are getting made you know because of that so it's definitely uh, 
Sorry, go ahead, Dan. I was just going to say, it's definitely a great time for, for horror films and horror fans. Mm -hmm. And it's nice because the people who also support it, whether it's just sharing the link or, you know, um, donating, whatever it is to help, everyone comes together and feels like they're part of the project. You know, I've donated to a bunch of films and it's like, I feel so good. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm involved in some capacity. You know, I believe in this project. I, I love these people. So it's, it's also nice because we all come together as, as one big family. Right. And it is how yeah. it feels. Yeah, and it, it also gives uh, the, the fans some, uh, some experiences that they wouldn't normally get with a, a, a studio horror film. You know, there's perks. You, in order to have a successful campaign, you have to be really creative with perks and try to think about the things that people, that you as a fan would want if you had that opportunity. And, you know, you can come up with some pretty, pretty creative things that, that people wouldn't necessarily get, you know, or be able to buy in a store. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it's, it's kind of a win-win on both sides. Right. Well, let's get back to the movie a little bit. In terms of uh, family, and you were mentioning a little bit before I hit record that uh, one of Felice's old friends, Dave Sheridan, is going to be getting involved with this. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> How did that come about with the... Uh, his in getting involved well when we did our final uh well actually uh, i mean if you go back to the beginning uh me and felissa actually when, while we were filming uh, i was gushing over dave sheridan because she told me that she had just got done filming with him. i was like I, man, I love him i love loved him in victor crowley yeah i loved him in in um in ghost world and and uh uh scary movie and uh I, I, we got to talking about it and then uh so later when we were uh, going to do our, our final crowdfunder, uh, just as, as an added, added bonus, we were like, well, okay, well, if we can get to this point, if we can raise this much money, you know, we'll bring in, you know, someone else to the movie, you know, someone that's, you know, another horror celebrity to the film. We didn't, we couldn't, couldn't tell anyone who it was, but you know, we said, if, if we can, if we can reach this point, we'll bring someone else in. And we, we made that, we reached that goal. And so uh, we reached out to him, and uh, he was he was all for it. He uh, we we actually offered him the role of the sheriff, and uh, I'm sure, yeah, I'm like sure Devil's you know, Rejects. Yeah, he he plays law officer in a lot of films, but he's good at it. He is. He's very talented. And uh, talking to him on the phone, it, it was kind of surreal listening to him do some of the lines over the phone because he was talking about the character. He's like, okay, yeah, so so with this part, you know, this is kind of how I'm seeing it. And when he said it, when he was saying the lines, I'm like, that's exactly how I heard it in my head. And it's 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 perfect. I love it. And uh I'm super excited because he's he's supposed to be growing out like a, a mustache and everything. And he's he gets into his characters. So oh my well. gosh. Half the time I don't recognize him like he'll be We've done so many movies together now. I've like lost track, but he always shows up to set in Cognito. Like I could hardly recognize him. And sometimes he'll be on a different set and I'm home and I'll, he'll send me a text of a photo. And I'm like, I don't even know, is this you? Like <laughs> he's been in such wild characters and camouflage and you know uh, prosthetics. He really, he's the one actor I've worked with who is so, I call him the indie Christian Bale. <laughs> because he's sort of like that wildly like driven character person who gets so immersed in their in their role that you don't even recognize him. Mm. There's no Dave Sheridan any longer. So he'll bring a lot and he brings great energy to the set. He's a wild man. He's fun. Yeah, he uh my wife was actually joking that uh, when we when we get him from the airport that we might not be able to recognize him when he gets off the plane because we have no idea oh, what he's gonna look like. I know, you don't know. Sometimes he has long hair with a beard, then he's got his glasses with no facial hair and a hat. Like, he's, I don't know how one person can completely change. Uh, and he's inspired me to do it. Like, on the past few films I've done with him, Kill Rose and Camp Twilight and Screen Test, he's, like, up, to, like, we're competitive. <laughs> and he'll, like, I try to now 
camouflage and do crazy stuff because I want to, you know, it's good. It's like a healthy competition. Like I'm going to go and my character is going to be crazy. Too. <laughs> <laughs> and it all started with Victor Crowley because we both had so much fun. He was Dylan and I played Kathleen. And although the two never really, um, you know, met on, in character, we um, we were both very invested, as was everybody. I mean, everyone was amazing, but just working with him, I was watching him, I'm like, who is this guy? He's a strange one. <laughs> and both of your characters in Victor Crowley were so extreme. They were very extreme, yes. <laughs> everybody else was so more wow. grounded, and then you had us. <laughs> so it was fun. <laughs> That's so yeah. exciting, the idea that you'll be working together again, and. I'm going to keep my yeah. eye out for that uh, prosthetic and character competition. Oh, you have to. You have no idea. In fact, we just got cast together in, um, we just got cast in a new project. Um, it's directed by the former drummer of Five Finger Death Punch, um, Jeremy wow. Spencer. And he, um, where Dave and I are, playing husband and wife. We'll see how that goes. But uh, <laughs> but it's it'll be interesting because the, his character, I was texting him yesterday, I'm like, oh my gosh, this was written for you. It's such a misogynistic asshole. And, the whole, <laughs> and my character the whole time was like, you are such an asshole. I'm like, these, char these lines are just coming up so easily. <laughs> I keep texting him his lines. He's like, yeah, I play big dick, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's great yeah we're really excited to to work with him uh we anyone who who hasn't met Felissa Rose doesn't know how how much fun she is to be around and if, if, treat. if Dave Sheridan is friends with Felissa Rose and Dave Sheridan's got to be a blast as well because is just she's she's a she's amazing I mean everyone had a great time everyone loved you know, filming with her and uh, yeah, like I said, we're excited because, you know, hopefully we think, you know, it's going to be just as fun with Dave Sheridan because yes. how can it not be? You got Dave It'll Sheridan. It'll be more Edward. fun, but I'll cry. You guys can FaceTime me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, um, um, we got to while, while he's there. We definitely yeah, have to. Definitely. Well, you I, am, I am already planning in my mind how I can get everybody together for a, a big interview party at a con so yeah yes, definitely <laughs> so you've got a, another friend uh and julianne prescott is oh yes yeah. such a sweetheart I absolutely adore her she is so nice yeah. she's like one of my closest friends too yeah Sorry. we uh we, she's an amazing so person amazing actress you're gonna love her too mm. yeah we filmed with her uh the week after uh we filmed with uh dave sheridan nice. and she she will be playing the camp uh nurse oh boy yeah. you better put her in something super sexy because she's uh <laughs> I, I think whatever she puts on is gonna be super sexy i think yeah i think I think it's the person and not the. Not I the, think it's the person, not the outfit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she's, uh, she's she's been great so far. Just uh, we we haven't officially met in person yet, but just talking to her and and uh, it's just how much she supports the movie and how much she's already involved. It's like you know, like I said, it's like she 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 was like one of the last person people to get cast in the film, but it's like she's been there since the beginning because she's so uh passionate and um and about sharing the film and getting the word out there which she's she's out she's that way about all of her projects anyone that casts her is lucky to have her in, in the film because i she, agree with you she gives like i said she, she's one of my closest girlfriends um i love working with her and i just she's like my sister i mean we we talk as much as possible especially through quarantine we've been each other's like you know pillars and i just i there's no one out there with a heart as big as julianne and that i can assure you um she's one of the most beautiful people hmm. well let's let's move on just a little bit and uh is it i read somewhere about you having a, a live punk band do the score is that happening did that happen 
Uh, it's it it should be yes. Well, it's not. They're not doing the score, but they will be doing uh, some songs in in the film. Uh, Adam Robertson is uh, he's actually the person who's going to be scoring the film, and he's uh, he's planning on trying to be as authentic as possible with the with the '80s synth and you know trying to trying to match that that uh, that music from the '80s. But also, we I was connected with it with the '80s punk band uh, that is. Uh, that's willing to allow us to to use some of the some of their music they have two full albums from the 80s uh i think their the band name is called the left and they're lo they're uh they're located out of uh maryland and uh yeah they're gonna they're gonna allow us to use their music in, in the film so we'll have at some actually authentic 80s punk music in the film that a lot of people might not have heard before so you might be able to you know to find some new 80s music that you you know that you enjoy so that's that's gonna be fun yeah not everybody's as old as me and was hearing the punk music back then <laughs> <laughs> you're amazing you're another beautiful sister we love you oh. <laughs> well uh we just got a gift and i got a little thing pop up my screen saying they removed the 40 minute time limit so <laughs> i won't have to rush you along quite as much <laughs> This this film sounds amazing, and I am I am just so ready to get out and see it already. And it sounds just based on the cast and you guys behind the the scenes, like it's it's just going to be amazing. Thank you. Well, we I appreciate that. Uh, like I said, I, I'm a, I'm and I'm a hardcore AD slasher fan. I love Sleepaway Camp, of course. That's why Felissa was the perfect choice, Aww, you know, to, thank you. to bring in. And um, yeah, you know, I always, I always felt like you know that that slasher type film should should be evenly balanced with with fear, horror, and and also comedy. You know, you've got to be able to laugh and be scared at the same time. It's got to be entertaining, you know, and. So we try to put a lot of light moments in the film. We try to make likable characters. We we want you to to you know be like, oh no, I, I can't believe that person got killed. You know, we want you, even even the the uh, the assholes or, or the you know or the Miss Crowd, you know, if if something happens to her, you know, we still we want you to be sad that that you know that that person didn't make it through the film and not just. Like, well, I'm glad that character's gone because, you know, I didn't like that character. So I try, you know, we try to make likable characters and we try to make a storyline that's going to carry you through to the actual murders and, and everything else. And you have a, like, who the uh, slasher is. There's a big, there's a big mystery wrapped up around that. Yes, there, there's a big mystery. We actually have, like, trading cards. Oh, cool. And it has different cast members. Uh, as awesome. potentially slash nurse, Miss Crown, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I get trading cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was another uh, another perk thing that reward that we did. If we reached a certain uh, goal, then everyone who contributed would would get free uh, free trading cards, uh, bloody yeah. sunset trading cards. Oh, and we yeah. reached the goal, so. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. It's it's done it film uh, where uh, you've got a, a list of a line of characters. They're all at at a summer camp, you know, uh, starting the camp up for the season, secluded in the middle of nowhere, and uh, Devil Face arrives, and it's a uh, it's a guessing game as to who is behind the mask. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because um, if someone's not involved with the genre, they think oh, I don't like horror. And I've actually had people say this to me. I don't like horror. I don't like those slasher movies. And I've had a couple of people watch a couple of things. Victor Crowley and Victor Crowley more so than Hatchet because Hatchet is just kind of like the, the, the storyline, which is heavy. And then the slasher. But Victor Crowley has the humor in it as well. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Things like Behind the Mask has the humor in it as well. And yeah. when someone actually watches that and they see that and they think, 
why did I think it? Because there are slash, there are horror that's just horror. There's mm -hmm. comedy that's just comedy. And then there's those of us who know and love that the, the films that have both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, Adam uh, Adam Green said something. Uh, I believe it was during the the, the Victor Crowley uh, uh, online screening that he did. He was talking about characters. That I, I I think he was talking about Dave Sheridan's character. But what he said was was kind of like my whole philosophy as well. He said that you know when you're writing characters and you know if you're writing a character that, that's annoying, you need to make sure that they're. Uh, annoying to the to to the other characters but not annoying to the audience because Funny you know, he said he, yeah he'd made right. that mistake and that's where he, he made characters that people hated you know they they were annoying you know to but there's kind of like a, a balance there where you make a character like like dave sheridan's character on victor crowley where he annoys the hell out of everyone in the film but the audience but he's loves endearing. that character yeah yeah, yeah the audience yeah finds him he has like such a heart that character is well yeah. drawn out like to us he states the obvious that's why it's annoying like austin's dead you know <laughs> but but to the audience we're like oh this poor guy he's really trying with his headshots <laughs> yep. you don't want him to die you don't want him to yeah. die no you don't definitely not but yeah i agree that's that's kind of like the balance is that you know you want to make movies that are entertaining and that you like the characters you know mm -hmm. you, you want them to to make it out yeah. um, so hopefully we did that <laughs> definitely well i'm gonna have to catch up with all of you guys again after this comes thank out thank you and uh we'll we'll talk about the uh the the film as a whole and just be able to celebrate the success of it yeah thank you definitely. so much and uh with women in horror with our website and youtube channel going live and actually this interview is going to be the first one that we show there so <gasps> thank you Bye, everybody since this will be shown then and um felisa is actually women in horror's ambassador because thank you more perpetuates the strong woman of her time than Felisa has. Oh my gosh, you're gonna make me cry now. Thank you. Couldn't you couldn't have picked a better person. Perfect choice. Oh Absolutely. my gosh. Yeah. Well, I can't imagine anybody meeting this woman and not falling in love with her. So, I agree. Um, thank, thank you so you much. All so much for taking the time and talking to us about this. And I am absolutely sure that Bloody Summer Camp is gonna be a success and I'll look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Yeah, we're, thank we're, you. Honored, we're honored that we got to be the, the first uh, first interview. And thank you for having us and helping us spread the word uh, about the film. We definitely appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, you so much. It. Thank you. I love seeing you guys. I love all of you. Thank you. Oh, Have a great you. day, everybody. Thank you, Melissa. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for watching. You can join our Women in Horror family by subscribing today. You can stalk us by clicking on the bell icon. You can watch more of my show or any of my sister shows by clicking on one of the videos to the right. Until next time, fiends. Take care. <laughs>